Welcome along to the Racing Post postcast in association with Paddy Power. We are looking ahead to Saturday, day five of the 2017 Royal Ascot meeting. I'm Bruce Millington and I'm delighted to be joined by the Irish maestro, the legend himself, Tony O'Hare, Stuart Riley from the Racing Post and Paul Binfield from Paddy Power. So we're going to take the Saturday card in chronological order and we will start with the 2.30. It's the Chesham Stakes and I've got an incredible stat for you after Paul Binfield has given us the latest betting from Paddy Power. Well, we're 6 to 5 September, Bruce, uh, 6 Massar, 10 Westerlinden, Nyaliti, and 14 Bar. Okay, how about this for a stat? Aidan O'Brien has fielded 25 newcomers this year, two year olds, and only one has won, and that is September, the favourite. So, we'll start with you, we'll stick with you, Paul. Is this the favourite to lay or to smash into? A little bit worried about this one. Bruce could, could be very decent. Churchill won this race last year, so um, he, he, he likes to bring a nice two-year-old here. It, it, it's the best of his, his so far this year, having won. Um, and, but I'm sure the bookies are going to take, take him on 16 runners, two-year-old race, eight, six to five at the moment. Um, we're surely that we're going to have to take him on. Just actually, before we talk about... Um the rest of the Saturday card. How are the bookmakers doing? Obviously, we're recording this before uh, the day four action. Yesterday was an absolute blind, wasn't it? The ladies' day was sensational, wasn't it? Yeah, ladies' day was pretty good. Um, so the bookies are slightly ahead after day three, but um, as you say, we're recording this on the uh, on the Thursday morning, uh, Friday morning, sorry, and we've got some short price ones like Winter and Caravaggio today. So um, punters could well get it back if if they come in. Yeah, yeah. September, Tony, good thing or one to oppose? I wouldn't be opposing her. She was uh, very, very impressive uh, at Leopardstown, absolutely skated in by five and a half lengths. She's by deep impact out of uh, Peeping Fawn, so well-bred. She really did it in style now at Leopardstown, uh, and um, I think they rate her very highly. I think she might uh, follow up Churchill's win from last year. Okie doke. Uh, Stu, what's your strategy going to be here, punting-wise? I'm definitely going to take uh, September on, I think. That was, she was one of the few in the field to debut over seven furlongs. A lot of these had enough speed to make their first start over six. That was also on yielding ground. It's going to be nothing like that today. I think she, at the price, she may just get tapped for toe by a speedier a type. The two that I like are uh, Massar, the, the Godolphin horse in there. Uh, I know juvenile judge David Baxter is very keen on that one. And the other one I like is the uh, Mark Johnson horse, uh, Nyaletti. Um, I love the way he rallied at Salisbury when he... he he got overtaken and he just came back and that gutsy performance over six furlongs, stepping up to seven, all that guts and professionalism, yeah, I'd, I'd take him to be in the frame each way. Tony, how did Stuart get into Ascot today? He hasn't had a shave and he hasn't got a tie on. Can you believe our standards have dropped at the racing post? <laughs> no, I, can, I can't actually, but it's very early in the morning, you know. He might, it is. He mightn't have gotten away with it in another couple of hours. He convinces me he's got one in his top pocket. The 3.05 then is the Wolferton. Uh, 72 to field, Paul Bimfield. And who is the market leader? Um, in the Wolferton, we have 72 Kyrat, uh, 5 Kid, Kid Me Never, 7 Central Square, 8 Elbrith, and it's 10 Bar, Bruce. Stick with you for the tip. OK. I'm going to go for Central Square. Um, this horse won on this day a year ago at Air. And um, there was some shrewdies earlier in the week at Ascot um, who took 14 to 1 about this. And um, he's, he's halved in price at 7 and they assure me that a, a big run is expected of this one. OK, Tony, who do you think we should be backing here? Uh, I'd go with uh, the favourite, Kerat, I think, uh, for Michael Stout and Jim Crowley. That would be the one I'd like. OK, Oaks and Stu, what's your view? I, I think this is an interesting race because um, there's only one horse in this whole field who's actually won off a mark higher than they're running off today. And that's uh, Maverick Wave. Now, he's not won for a while, but he was a Group 3 horse at his best. And he's on a lower mark than he's actually won off before. Not many of them have done this. The other one I like is Arad. Um, it's a dual-listed winner. He does have class. So uh, it's a weird-looking race, this. I'm not sure I think it's going to take too much winning. There's a lot of horses that are badly handicapped in there. But, yeah, they'd be my two against the field. And they're 33 to 1, the pair. So worth throwing a dart at. Well played. Right back in a minute with the Hardwick.